If you apply for grad school or jobs in robotics, there's a common mistake many people make. Typically, they just pile on projects and list a bunch of fancy keywords. However, that approach may not get you far. The truth is, the list of hot keywords isn't the eye-catching to hiring managers in the industry or PIs in the grad school. Instead, what truly makes you stand out is demonstrating the depth and complexity of the problems you've actually tackled. Therefore, in this video, I'll show you exactly how to stand out by outlining three progressive project levels and how you can master them. And if you're already in the field, comment down below which level of the project got your first job offer. And if you're new to here, I'm Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer, educator. My mission is to help people smoothly land on the robotics field. For those of new here, I was an aspiring engineering student with a big dream. However, the reality was like, I failed my linear algebra the class that everyone passes. I felt overwhelmed that I lost between theory and building the real robots. Initially, all I wanted was to build intelligent robot like R2D2, a system that could see, understand, and interact with people. I desperately wanted to contribute and apply the complex concepts in the real world. However, my conventional path, burying myself in textbooks, failed. I asked help to professors, but they just gave me more textbooks and even mocking my academics. I felt isolated, lost in textbooks, and utterly confused how to even start. However, something changed. I happened to go through these steps I'm going to cover today, and this is not about studying harder. And through these accidental breakthroughs and a different project approach, I was building a gesture recognition UAV. I published a paper, I got a grad school admission with 100% tuition waived with monthly stipend. And after that, I received the first job offer. And it felt like a superpower. So, the question is, what happened to that sophomore kid who failed the linear algebra? This accidental path transformed a struggling student into a robotics engineer. Today, I don't think it was just a luck. Instead, it's more like a repeatable pattern of the project levels that missed the demand. In this video, I will reveal these three progressive projects levels and the details so you can duplicate. Hey, by the way, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Your support helps this channel grow and let us keep bringing more free contests like this. Level 1 is a beginner project adding a bit more spice to hobby. Level 1 project has a very simple and straightforward two-step actions. First, start your RC hobby because all you need is a simple minimal interest in the robot frame at this level. Second, get an Arduino board from Amazon and try to replace your remote controller with Arduino board because all the market wants from the engineer is the automation. For example, I bought an RC car and simply play with it casually felt how hot the ESC, the speed, electric speed controller got, and this seemingly small and detailed emphasized the genuine experience. This experience is crucial. After a minor skin burn from the hot ESC, designing a heat sink for the robot became a natural and proactive step. Other engineers lacking this direct feel might only react after their robot chassis melts, then scrambling to study the temperature that you already know. Next, the automation is the core skill. Just replace your remote controller with an Arduino to make your RC car move independently or automate the drone takeoff. This simple act powerfully shows you have mastered removing the human factor from the loop. Therefore, if you truly want to build a career in robotics, invest in a very basic RC car or drone kit, even if you have a professional background. Don't just operate it, actively sense its temperature, material response, sound, and vibration. However, all I've mentioned here is nowhere near the level of the professional project, which brings us to what you really need to do next. Level 2 is an intermediate project integrating multiple sensors and algorithms. Level 2 is all about real-time sensor data and controller integration, because this is where your math and coding skills truly blossom. However, this is also where many people give up due to the complexity, even though they have professional backgrounds like computer vision, embedded systems, and etc. And here's my superpower tip. Don't try everything at once and resist jumping into trendy, fancy algorithms like reinforcement learning. Instead, cultivate a robust engineering perspective by focusing on three key points here. First, connect math, code, and robust physical behavior. Second, build a control engineer's perspective. 
most robotics projects revolve around control blood diagram. Understand the concepts like state estimation, sense of fusion, comma filter, state space matrix, and more. Third, finally, you can start to add ML and deep learning algorithms by incrementally adding sensors like a 3D camera, LiDAR, then meticulously connect their information flow all the way down to your controller. This incremental approach cultivates a holistic understanding of robot system and complex problem-solving skills. By doing so, I studied lots of online courses, including Arduino STM32, PCB, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Linear Algebra, especially from 3Blue1Brow, and Control Theories. And here's my actual process with my UAV. My custom UAV autopilot project illustrates this. I started by implementing a common filter from scratch for inertia sensors. This forced me to deeply understand math and its direct influence on the drone's stability. Next, I attached the Microsoft Kinect camera for gesture recognition. Since raw Kinect data wasn't enough, I implemented the neural network to classify human skeletons and define custom commands like take off. However, ideas met harsh reality. The drone's propeller vibrations severely messed up the stable camera feed, and the deep learning algorithms couldn't do too much. There's no magic. It's called a popular crap in crap out situation. This practical challenge, grappling with physical interference on the software, is precisely where many get lost or give up. Therefore, to truly excel and make your resume or CV stand out, you must highlight your problem-solving ability on top of the fancy jargons. This often means confronting and overcoming these practical integration challenges. While I'll share more strategies for showcasing this at the end, remember that tackling these specific topics of problems is precisely what elevates your project to the next professional level. And before we move on, let me introduce today's sponsor of the video, which is me. If you think you are in this level 2 journey, I know building the basic perspective is not so straightforward. Connecting math code and physical behavior of the robot, as well as the building the control engineering foundation. However, we do really need this unshakable foundation. Believe it or not, many robotics engineers lack core control concepts like sensor fusion comma filters. These are the bedrocks of control engineering, vital for advanced ML and AI. Robotics 101 helps you connect math, code, and physical behavior of the robot to build a control engineering perspective. In the course, we'll be repeating the basic concepts and practices throughout the course using different examples. My first job landing project blended deep learning with common filter that ML control engineering mix was a superpower. Robotics 101 teaches the foundational integration skill sets so that you can mix with advanced techniques in the future. Therefore, if you are ready for this powerful skill set and an unshakable robotics career, check out Robotics 101. I'll put the link below. Now, level 3 advanced project with industry and research experience. If you have passed a level 2 project with dirty real time data, it's now time to think about the users. Industry project is all about use case issues and its problem solving. Because the users pay the money, you must meet their standard. And especially robotics, oftentimes there is not much industrial solutions, therefore research projects go with it. Let's break down this. The first interview question I recall is, for a vacuum robot held up by a user, blocking the sensors like LiDAR and 3D camera of the robot, what would you do as an engineer? In short, my answer was aerostate common filter. That shows the basic control engineering solves the real-world issues, tracking growing state estimation error to handle the sensor fusion problem. It's about robust basics, not just fancy trends like reinforcement learning or robot foundation map. Another industrial level application can be multiple different use cases like robot holding a dish. However, this situation comes with infinite number of the variations such as dish color, size, and surface material are all different and same for factory environment for the robot's interface. So to this end, decision-making processes for a robot is highly context-dependent. To augment the situation awareness, one way the robotics engineer employee nowadays is generating the multiple different situations in the simulation. And as you might have heard of MBDI's like SIM, provide these relevant environments so that you can generate multiple different missions. Then you can collect the data and then train the AI ML model or even directly train in the simulation parallelly using the reinforcement learning. Also, another way to tackle the real world problem is the research because the research project pushes it to the innovate where no solutions exist. 
Imagine coordinating a swarm of robots handling data from thousands, or their behavior if the data links fail. How to handle tons of real-time data coming from thousands of robots, what kind of server-side traffic management needs to be there? These are vibrant, unsolved research topics, exploring such complex problems which demand new approaches to the data, communication, and control. Therefore, these projects are the most compelling for grad school and job applications, and it's not surprising that many top robotics roles require graduate degrees. If you aspire to push boundaries and solve truly novel problems, think about how to address these real-world cases. So far, I've talked about three levels of the project. And accidentally, I was able to prove my project by my graduation during my undergrad, covering mostly level 2 and below level 3 projects. Like I handled the camera noise. And that got me the grad school admission with 100% tuition wave. And I think this kind of project level breakdown is pretty interesting because most of people just say work on many projects and have confidence that you can do it, something like that. However, I believe if you can progressively build the levels of complexity thoughtfully, you can also repeat my breakthroughs that transformed a math failure, like linear algebra failing sophomore student, into a fully functioning engineer working on autonomy of the robots. However, don't get me wrong, here's one last practical tip. I never studied the list of textbooks in a comfy library which wouldn't work for me again, I failed my linear algebra. Instead, the practical picture is more like this, in a lab with a robot, computer, soldering iron, and the textbooks that has little burns on the side from the soldering iron. I studied the textbooks by solving the problems from my robot. And I didn't really care whether the solution is rooting from CS, ME, EE, and so on. I just solved the problem. My major program in the college was none of my business. So, the entire driving force to figure out what to study is coming from the projects. And again, this can be challenging, and that's why I created this online course or by Swat One. So if you're curious, check out the link below. So what do you think? Do you see any overlaps with your current project with one of the levels in the video? Share your stories. And if you are working in the field already, which levels of the project got your job first? And like always, if you're interested in this kind of topics, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're curious about what I do, check out these videos as well.